MB webinar for October 28th. Our guest tonight is Rob Fairfield from Stone Pro out of Anaheim, California. Rob's been teaching uh, stone restoration, cleaning, grinding, all the good stuff for for how long now, Rob? About hey, 15 Mark. years, Mike. Oh, okay, Mark, we're hearing your keyboard like crazy. You got to turn down your. Uh, I'll mute it when I need to. Hear. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Fifteen years, have you said, Rob? Yes, sir, Mike. All right. Well, uh, I think Rob has the uh, the honored title of the uh, most respected and best uh, teacher in the industry. That's no slam on uh, my buddy Cameron DeMille, who's a, an extremely knowledgeable fellow, but uh, I think Rob was a uh, sixth grade teacher in his prior life, and he's got a real smooth delivery, and looking forward to tonight's presentation. Um, we're going to move through a few, few things. We're going to talk about uh, shower work, countertop work, and I think something that a lot of guys are seeing now, I, mean, I know I get quite a few calls on it, as those guys breach out from cleaning, branch out, I should say, from cleaning porcelain and tile, they are seeing limestones and travertines and some marble floors, and inevitably you're going to run into etching. There's different levels of etching, and it comes down to etching you can see and etching you can feel. And there's pretty easy ways to get rid of that etching that you can just see but can't feel. And that's the most common, because most people, when they... They spill their wine, coffee, lemonade, or whatnot. They're usually pretty quick in getting it up. If they let it sit too long, then it becomes a divot or a bowl, and that's when you start to feel it. But if you can get it up quick, just a very light, almost discoloration occurs. And Rob's going to go over removing that uh, those light etch uh, stains and whatnot. Um, Lance G, yes, you are early to the party. Good to see you, Lance. People tend to uh, accumulate a little later here from this West Coast bound presentation. But Rob, why don't you give us the uh, the three minute elevator speech and then we can jump right in it. <laughs> I appreciate being here. Uh, Mike, I, I appreciate it a lot and I think, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, not a sixth grade teacher, but I did coach football for 17 years and when I gave that up, uh, fell in love with doing what I'm doing now and uh, get a lot out of uh, helping guys and solving problems and keeping it at a very uh, at a level where guys can understand and, and kind of come from them because it wasn't very long ago I was I had to learn this industry uh, coming from the same area that um, a lot of you guys are coming from so um, I'm able to speak it in, a, in a simple terms kind of a layman's terms and there's a lot of guys out there like Cameron do some incredible things and um, more of the things that uh, that I work with the guys on are the things that can uh, the day, things they de deal with on a daily basis. So like you talk about uh, etch marks, you know, I, I, I want your guys to be able to clean a bedroom, carpet in a bedroom in the back of the house, and as they walk by a bathroom in the hall, see hard water deposits on a shower wall or glass door, and be able to add that onto their surf to, the, to their services, and see a marble counter with uh, water rings and water marks on it, and be able to take care of that for their customer. Maybe walk into the kitchen and see uh, where voids have opened up in the travertine floor and be able to fill those for their customer and then look up and see a granite countertop that's stalled and be able to add that on and that's really what what drives and those are the easy things that don't take a lot of time, don't take a lot of learning curve and certainly don't take a lot of investment to be able to add income to to their business and it's their, their services that to add on to a customer base that guys have built over years so it's, it's a lot easier to add on services to customers you already have than to go out and try to find new customers and that's really what what mm -hmm. we do and what it's all about so I've uh, there were some uh, I posted this out on other Facebook and stuff too and there are some guys that have posted some really nice things about uh, how much you've helped them and learned from and you know teaching them um, where did you start learning all of this stonework, I guess? It's just even my curiosity because I don't know enough about it myself here in northern Minnesota. And I don't know everybody in the industry as well as I do the other textile part of our industry. So uh, how did you get this kind of rolling, what you're doing? Um, when, I, when I started, um, I was able to be around a lot of people that were in the industry um, for a long time that worked with me. 
Um, and then as I grew, and, and, and the, the, the hardcore teaching part has really only been about the last five years. Um, okay. I've been lucky enough to work with guys all over the United States. Um, and, you know, why, why Stone Pro is the, the major line that we use, I, I, I work for Hard Rock Tool. I don't work for Stone Pro. Um, okay. And by doing that, I'm able to learn and bring in different theories. I bring in theories from from guys from from Cameron to I've learned a lot from Cameron. I've learned a lot from his partner Ted over the years, um, and from guys that are doing stone. A lot from Lance Golden. Um, a lot from guys, and I hear what works, so I'm able to bring things into Hard Rock Tool, um, different manufacturers, different ideas, different theories, and and then I get the chance to play with them and then test them with guys doing work all over the country. So it's just a compilation of, you know, the last, really the last five to seven years that, that are success stories from guys all over the United States. So it's, it's really, um, what I do is really not theory related or product related or, or, you know, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat and yep. I try to use as many of them as possible. All right. So what, what we were talking about earlier is what Mike wanted me to do is spend some time talking about awesome. the different types of stone that we work on. Uh, it's a little more information, and you want to really learn how to identify stone. There's a great website called geology.com, geology um, and it speaks in pretty easy terms of how to tell um, the difference between the, the uh, granite, the igneous or the granite, the sedimentary, the limestone, and the travertine that you work on and then the marble or the metamorphic stone. So we're going to spend some time going through this. And um, really when it comes to cleaning it and polishing it, guys, what you really have to decide or what you have to determine, in most cases, is it granite or not? Uh, because granite is the only stone that we deal with that, it, that, that, that does not have calcium. So it polishes very much different and it cleans very much different. Um, so basically, um, there's, there's more. Uh, information in here than a lot of guys, but the, the bottom line when it comes to um, identifying granite, they all have a crystalline form. The grains range, but you can you can see every mineral that's in the stone, unlike marble and, uh, and travertine. It's, it's hard. It's, it can't, you can't scratch it, and you can't use acid. Or you, the acid doesn't burn it. So there's not an appliance in the world that would sit on a granite countertop and scratch it as it's moved across. You either have to have another piece of granite or something to harness them a diamond to, uh, to scratch granite. Uh, every knife or any tool that, that anybody would use on a countertop won't scratch the granite. So being a crystalline form, it's hardness and reacting to acids are the three easiest ways to determine whether it's granite or not. Um, there's a couple uh, pictures of a couple different granites, and you can see the the mineral and the grains in it. It's, it's, uh, it stands out. It's very busy. Granite is very busy, and not busy with veining, but busy with, with mineral. Then you have the sedimentary rocks, and the ones that we work on most are limestone, and of course the most popular hard uh, floor covering is the travertine, which is good for us because the maintenance on it is impossible. Um, the uh, travertine and limestones are formed either in uh, old ocean beds or lake beds uh, where the sediment has uh, layered itself. Uh, limestone's recognizable a lot of times by the, um, uh, the uh, should I've lost the word, the, the uh, it's in here someplace, uh, the, the uh, fossils that are in it. And then travertine's easy because it's full of voids and holes. And when it comes from the factory, most of the time before it's uh, laid, you can tell where the holes have been formed or filled. Um, the limestones and the travertines are formed by uh, hot water springs underground and that's why they've got the, uh, the holes in them. But they react with the acids. They, they, they are calcium based stones. Uh, there are a few limestones that don't have calcium, but for the most, travertine is what we deal with most. Um, and they react with the acids. So you have a customer with the travertine floor, anything they pull from that refrigerator other than water and butter uh, if it hits that floor on the way to the counter, it's going to leave an etch mark, which again is good for us to, to go out and take, a, take care of it. And it scratches very easy as well. So on the left here you have a travertine piece that hasn't been filled. That piece is actually cross cut. And then on the right you have some limestone where you can actually see the fossils that are in the stone. 
You're right, Lance. That is travertine is job security. That is a great point. And then you have your metamorphic, and I thought I fixed this. Metamorphic is spelled PH. I don't know what I was thinking, so excuse the the uh, the misspelling of metamorphic. I, I thought I fixed that. I spelt it right everywhere else except for in the title. Uh, metamorphic rocks basically at some point in their lifetime have been a limestone or travertine and exposed to temperature, pressure, in a long period of time, they metamorphosize um, into uh, marble. That's why there's a lot of confusion out there. Or guys will call one type of thing, like a Rojo Alicante, which is the red marble you'll see in a second. Um, most of us call it marble, but the true scientists will tell us that it's a, that it's a, it's a limestone. And marble is the most uh, easiest identified by the swirls or the bands or the veining. And they, they, uh, and they react really cool with acid, and they scratch very easy as well. So you can see the red, the Rolla Conti on the left, which is fairly popular, and then the white Carrera on the right, which is, uh, you see a lot of countertops, you see in a lot of bathroom, and rust is a big issue on the, uh, on the white marble. But those are two pretty popular marbles that, that uh, the guys work on. And then uh, Mike asked me when we spoke yesterday, is you know if, we, if 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 the guys out there are looking at a stone and they're not sure what to do, how how what are some of the things they can do to to see what the uh, what the stone is, to see if it's calcium based, to see how hard it is. The first one is the hardness of it, and there's there's information here that you can go back on YouTube and look and read. Um, I I, did, I wanted to be a little bit more detailed than what I talked about tonight, so you could go back. But the hardness basically is. Does it scratch or doesn't it? If it scratches, it's not granite. Uh, on some of your serpentine marbles and some of your limestones, they're hard to scratch because the, the mineral in them are very hard, but they do scratch. Um, you find a small corner, uh, if it's a floor or underneath the side, if it's a countertop, take a pocket knife, take a razor blade, and just take a minute and see if it scratches. If it scratches, you know it's calcium based. Um, when it comes to polishing it in, in most cases. So you can use chemical to polish it. You can use diamond impregnated pads to polish it. You have a lot of options. Uh, polishing granite is a completely different animal. So it's important to know uh, the, the hardness. Then you've got, let's go to the next slide here. Okay, then you've got the uh, acid test. Um, carry a little bit of your, your tile and grout acid cleaner with you, dilute it way down, uh, put it in a little uh, dropper, again find a corner and put it on there. If it reacts with the, with the uh, stone, you know it's calcium based. Again, you know what to use to polish it and you know what to use to clean it. So it becomes very easy. Again, if it's, uh, if it's granite or a stone with uh, uh, no calcium in it, there is no reaction. You know, you take acid and you put it on a brick, let's say. The only time that the acid reacts on a brick is if there's water mineral on it from sprinklers. So it will react with anything that's acid base. Okay. The, the, the next two or three that I've got get a little bit more scientific, but they are ways as you grow into this that you can, you can help identify the stone colors, one of them. Um, you know, the guys that have been in a while and have been around a lot of different stones will know by the amounts uh, a mineral that's in it, and what minerals or what colors, and, and that will give them an idea of what kind of stone that they're using. But the hardness and the acid test are the two best for the guys that are that are uh, following us tonight. And then you have the cleavage. I figured the carpet cleaner. You guys would like this one. Um, basically, it's how the minerals line up and how they break. Um, it is is a way that that's the actual tell. term, Rob. Yeah, I know it's. It's scientific. I don't use it a lot, but I was trying to give you a bang for a buck, Mike. But it's another way that we can right. tell what the stone is. Okay. We don't use these very often, but if, if your guys research what's out there, this is what they'll, what they'll see. And then the luster tells you a lot of, of what uh, the mineral that makes it up. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's not metallic, it's, it's, it has a shiny reflector, but it's, it's glassy or... or uh, it's, it's, if it's got a lot of metal in it, then it's, it's more of a pearly or silky. But again, guys, the acid and the, the scratch test are two of the best ways to go. Okay. Any questions on identifying stone before we move on from anybody? Real world uh, research, Rob. 
um, spending time in tile stores. I mean, obviously, you don't want to be asking the homeowner, what is this? You're not going to install any trust. But uh, besides going to different tile stores, Home Depots and the whatnot, and, you know, looking at what they are, what else do you recommend? Um, the Marble Institute of America has on their website, they have a place where you can go and put in the characteristics of the stove, you know, the color, uh, the pattern of the mineral, uh, and, and that will help you identify the stone. Uh, like I said earlier, Mike, I think you were gone. Um, there's a website called uh, geology.com that has a lot of great information. And at the end of the day, just testing it to see if it scratches or, or if there is acid. Because knowing the names of all the stone, I don't think it's important. It's not that important. I don't know a name of a lot. I know the ones that are <laughs> that are a pain in the butt um, or the right. ones that are popular. But at the end of the day, for, for what most of what most of these guys are going to deal with, um, because me, like everybody else out there, I'm a long way away from being where guys like Cameron are that have done this their whole life and have experienced every situation out there. But in the real world, with what your guys are, or what the guys that are out there facing when it comes to, um, you know, etch marks and um, small repairs and, and polishing up. And a lot of what we do in this industry isn't removing damage. It's just polishing up and, and making it look the best you can. Just being able to realize or, or understand what family the stone falls under will allow them to, to be successful. I think that's the same goes with cleaning oriental rugs, Rob. You don't need to know what tribe made it. You don't even really need to know what country it came from. You just need to know if it, you know, what it is. Is it wool? Is it silk? Is it tufted? Is it, you know, nylon? And more importantly, is it going to bleed or shrink? Same thing with stone. You know, are you going to etch it? Are you going to scratch it? Uh, are you going to crack that grout? Does it have lipids? You need to know the basic stuff. And I think if you spend enough time looking at what you see on a day-to-day -day basis as a carpet cleaner, um, figuring out what you got, using these websites, and going to good stone yards. Um, almost any metropolis will have an area in town where they're fabricating all these uh, countertops, and um, they'll have the larger tile stores over there. The Home Depots, you're going to see mostly porcelain and travertine and a little bit of polished marble. Uh, spending time in stores, and you don't need to tell them that you're a stone cleaner when you go in there and visit, picking their brain on trying to figure out what's what, but um, I know I worried about it when I got into it, and it seemed like within six months I could identify pretty much anything. But spending time in tile stores is definitely key. Yeah, and you know what I, I felt too, Mike, is with 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 all the the carpet cleaners and window cleaners and guys that I work with all over the country that expand their businesses, this is it, the stone industry isn't something you have to jump into 100%. If you start mm -hmm. slow, if you start with, you know, maybe showers, because guys that are in been in stone for a while won't do showers because they don't get paid for doing showers. Um, but if you do that or you do granite countertops or you do light etch removal on marble vanities, Things that don't have a big expense to get into, things that don't take a large learning curve to get into, you do one job, you're a little bit more comfortable. Three or four jobs in, you're a lot more comfortable. A dozen jobs in, it, it just like cleaning carpet. You know, the, the more you're around it, the safer you feel. And, and, and yeah. without even knowing it, the more confidence you have in it. What what you guys do in the carpet industry is rocket scientists compared to what we do polishing rock. You agree with that, Sager? Um, well, you know, again, I, I think about it. My brothers and I talked about it, too. It, it's just like anything. You're going to start out new. You're going to be nervous on it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I sit and I as we're doing this, I'm typing in stone names to see if I see pictures on Yahoo on the images and stuff and I mean it just takes identification it's like identifying a poly and a nylon I'm sure but I mean I can identify most granites um, the one I called you on Mike that they'd use the uh, vinegar water on and their little portable and mess that up that one time uh, um, you know 
travertine, typical Home Depot install stuff. That's you know, awesome. that's what we see mainly up here starting to go in. So, yeah, you know, it would take us time getting the right equipment, doing it. You know, but I suppose it would be like anything else. You dive in, you take a chance, and some of them turn out, and later you go back and look at some of your old work and go, wow, that was awful, but I still got paid. <laughs> yeah, well, like yeah white but, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's it keeps us in business. Go ahead, Rob. Um, it's uh, but you know we most guys stay away from stone because they're worried about the replacement value if they make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, my industry has a lot of guys that make it sound a lot harder than it is. A lot of guys that make it sound like you have to have really. You know, all different types of equipment, all different types of diamonds, all different types of machines, and 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 I I, I don't get it. Um, there's 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 help available uh, if you have questions. Um, it's it's a rock, and you know I'm not saying there's nothing you can ever do that can't be fixed. But in 15 years, I've never met, unless they, they drop something or, you know, drop, or they're walking on a countertop fixing something and it cracks. That's a little bit different story. But when it comes to polishing and diamond work, there's nothing you can do that can't be reversed and be fixed. So, and, and part of the learning curve is being out there and experiencing the different types of, of surfaces that you're working on. And... You know, when I like you, this guy already. <laughs> when, when, you, when you have, I mean, I spend, I, I literally get 15 to 20 texts a day from guys all over the United States and Canada saying, I've got this stone coming up. I think it's marble. Can you confirm or not? And that's, you know, being educated is one thing, but being educated and having um, the, the people that teach you turn their back on you after they've made their money isn't educating. And that's really what makes Cameron special because Cameron's there for a lot of guys, for everybody that's ever walked through his classroom. Um, and, and that's what makes Cameron different. And there's, and I think that's what makes me different. I think that's why guys appreciate what I do. And there's not a lot of those guys in this industry. And when you have a resource in like, like a guy like Cameron and, and, and they're in, in me and, and maybe a couple other guys, um, you shouldn't be afraid to move on and, and use those resources. You know, don't don't pick up the phone and say, hey, I hate to bother you. Um, you know, or I text me because I, 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 you were probably busy. That's, you know, um, there's a few guys that, in this industry that want guys to get better and want this industry to get better and, and uh, take advantage of that, guys. Don't run away from it. I'll vouch for that. I've, I've called Rob before. It might even have been on a block number, and he answered right away. I mean, if he's, in, if he's teaching a class, I don't, it's not going to hurt my feelings you didn't pick up. But uh, I definitely called you more than once. I called Cameron more than once, and it's, it's true. But the both of you pick right up and uh, spend whatever time's necessary to, to help me out, and it's very much appreciated. Okay. Um, yeah. And, boy, I know my son, after meeting you in Vegas last month, was thrilled. You, you, uh, your sincerity came right over, and he's dying to take your class. He'll be, he'll be down there in just a couple weeks, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Well, That's let's awesome. keep moving on your, uh, your slideshow here, Rob. All righty. Um, a big part of our business is uh, our showers, hard water to pots, uh, soap scum. Tonight I'm going to talk more about just cleaning it off. We're going to get into diamond and pregnant pads and, and, and crystallizers and, and powders. and uh, They will all apply to a shower, except it's vertical work. Um, so you'll see how to do that. But I really wanted to get into um, doing the shower itself. And this is a video that uh, one of my coworkers did at one of his friend's house. Um, some of it we've, we've bettered. Some of it... Uh, and I'll go through that as we get there, um, working smaller pads and doing some different things. But, um, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, there's a lot of different chemicals that we use from a lot of different companies. But one thing that, that makes the Stone Pro a little bit unique is they have some really cool problem solvers that, that other companies don't have. And I think that comes from 
the people that that are involved in Stone Pro, like like Mark Calvillo, every day have lived the life of being in the field and, and being a restoration guy and what causes problems and how do we make it better. And we've got some really cool chemists that we work with that we can just play around. And I've been given the freedom of every time, I mean, two or three times a week, new products are coming in the door. Try this, do this, see how this works. Send it out to guys and, and see how it works. And uh, uh, and then within a few months, if it, if it proves itself, we, we have it. But the stone scrub allows you to work on and actually, the stone industry is probably my smallest industry for the stone scrub. My two biggest industries for stone scrub are window cleaners and car detailers because it doesn't hurt anything. Car de uh, detailers or, and car washes all over Southern California can take hard water minerals off a of clear coat and chrome wheels and not hurt anything. So, stone scrub on, on the painted surface? Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. Um, it's uh, and the car detailing industry is probably I sell more stone scrub to the car uh, car detailing industry than anybody else. On a polished uh, paint job, you're not spider webbing, swirling, none of that. Clear coats, fine, nothing. No kidding, awesome. So it's it's safe for everything. So this one product, because you know, if you have a porcelain uh, shower. Um, or a shower that's not stone, you just go in there with a good acid and knock the hard water deposits down. But you still have to be careful of the metal framing on the glass door, and you still have to be careful of, of the uh, of the faucet and the you know the hot water knob and the cold water knob because the acid will burn the the chrome finish. Stone scrub doesn't do any of that. So we're going to go through this a little bit. This allows you to clean. And, and what's cool, Mike, is all the pictures I've gotten here are pictures that have been sent to me from guys in the field that have used it, that, that, where, they, where they've sent it to me. Okay. So what you basically need is a, a variable speed polisher, a three inch, and then either a five or a seven inch backer pad to go on that polisher. I prefer a five inch um, mm -hmm. because it's less messy and it throws stuff a lot. I mean, the difference between how far your overspray goes with a five inch and a seven inch is huge. Um, a hog's hair stream, what, go ahead. I, I, I would never consider that. The five inch throws how now uh, how much less distance than a seven inch? Probably forty percent. Hmm. Okay. That's why when I pol even when I polish countertops now, I never use seven inch anymore because it's just too messy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then I uh, uh, and then a hog's hair extreme. It's depending on the brand that you buy. Sometimes they're called Gorilla Pad. Um, and then uh, and then a stone scrub. And it's important to stay on low speed. And before we move on, for the guys that are listening, when you're doing a shower, if you look at that shower and you're thinking 350 to do the shower, um, you need to dump. You need to double that to triple it. And don't be afraid to walk away because holding holding a seven inch Makita above your head for hours. Yeah. If you if you take that job for three hundred and fifty, it'd be just like the first time you took a lacquer finish off a Saltillo tile. You'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. So you know, don't be afraid because you can be cleaning carpet, or you can be polishing a marble floor, or a travertine floor, or you can be cleaning a granite countertop for three hundred and fifty dollars, and not with no pain. So don't don't find yourself in a shower for ten hours making the same amount of money you could be making cleaning three houses of carpet. Because that's that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So this is a shower. The picture on the left, you can see on the back wall all the water mineral and how messy and, and light the floor is with the grout. And uh, when the pictures come in, the guys don't always take it at the same angle. But I wanted to show real life pictures. It's real easy for me to go in the warehouse and take pictures. But I wanted to show you what's happening. And you can see the difference in the travertine floor. Um, and on that back wall, unfortunately, on the after picture, you just see the one corner, but there's a huge difference. And even on that back wall, you can see that there's a lot more color and a lot more, a lot more reflectivity. Um, in the corner there, you got a gray granite wall. Is that all just covered in soap scum? Yeah. And, it, and uh, when, when Jeff took this, he didn't, uh, uh, on the after picture, get a lot of that wall, but I, you'll see a better picture of, of the better. And if you look at the... Um, the floor on the before, you can see the grout joints and, and all the water uh, uh, minerals. So let's go to the next one. 
Yeah, you'll see in a minute. The whole shower with stone scrub. Yep. And then here, and he actually has a picture of it with the stone scrub sitting on the seat with the Makita. Here's another shower he did uh, with the glass, the before and the after the glass, and and all the uh, all the all the brass um, surrounding. Here's that like same the shower. The brass, the chrome. Yeah, and then and you can see the shower that back wall now that you couldn't see in the picture. There's no water mineral on that picture anywhere. And then here's the show, here's what the glass looked like on the on the left before he cleaned it with the wow. stone scrub on the right. What's he working that into that glass with uh, steel wool? No, he's working it with a uh, with the hawkshair, hawkshair extreme. And that's not going to scratch glass, huh? Nope. Nope. Let's and if I would believe, nice like, this shower, shower, this shower, this shower, I believe, if I remember right, this shower was. Uh, uh, fourteen hundred and fifty bucks is what he made on this shower. Took him six hours. Such a nice shower, isn't it amazing? They let it get to that point. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know how it is. I have glass showers too. Uh, just glass shower doors. Nothing like this. Then when we put them in, I squeegeed the glass for about the first two weeks, and then I said screw yeah. it. And then my yeah. wife squeegeed. No. <laughs> then I said my wife will do it when she gets out of the shower, and she did that for about another six weeks, and then we both said screw it. <laughs> so once a year, I have to stone scrub now. <laughs> and then here's here's it is on a. This isn't the same picture, but this is on the on the uh, the faucet. Just the difference in taking the mineral off the metal without hurting the metal. How much I've used stone scrub quite a bit. Um, seems like a lot of the reactivity happens just in the dwell time. Whatever solvents and minerals killers or whatever the heck you got in there. Uh, seems to take care of almost half the problem. Is that correct? And then the scrubbing yeah. is the other half. Yeah, the, the dwell time is probably most important. I would agitate in the beginning and let it sit. Um, you know, and sometimes it doesn't work. And I tell guys that it's not, it's not a miracle cure, but it allows you to remove minerals and at least get it better on surfaces that you can't use acids on. You know, if 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 I'm doing a a a, a a shower that's porcelain tile, I'm not using stone scrub. I'm going to use a good acid. I'm going to mask off the metal so I don't hurt the metal, and I'm going to use a good acid because it's le it, it, it's just faster and easier. But yeah. there's a lot, you know, you couldn't use an acid on this fixture without ruining the fixture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if we go back, you know, we couldn't use it. We could use the acid on the on the granite wall, but we couldn't use it on the travertine. Hey, Rob, what's the difference? They seem very similar. Uh, stone scrub and uh, that Magic Owls hard water or glass and metal magic. It used to be called something like uh, Galaxy 2000 hard water spot remover, and then. Uh, you know, Al, he, he renamed it, and they seem to both kind of accomplish the same thing, but uh, glass of metal magic, you know, when you rub between your fingers, you get a little more of a abrasive feel. Are you familiar with that product? Uh, I've heard of it, Mike, but I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the pH is on that. Um, it doesn't sound like it's acidic, or you wouldn't be able to use it. The biggest, the biggest difference of what we've learned about stone scrub, or what I've learned about it, Again, because I don't get involved in the chemistry, and I and I don't, I'm like a lot of the guys that use the product. I don't get to play with this product until it's a product. I have no say in the development. I have no say in the chemistry. Um, I get it when it's other than maybe testing some products to say it works or it's as good as or whatever. But my real world using these products starts when it ends up on the shelf at Hard Rock Tool. Okay. Um, and what I've learned with this product. Is the the, the 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 when it has that citrus smell to it? That's not a fragrance. That's a solvent that's in that product. It does a lot of really special things. And I mean, I mean, I've I've used it as a rust remover. Um, I, I I've used it in a lot of it. When I've used it when guys come in and they've got um, a permanent marker on a granite countertop and can't get it off. Mm -hmm. I say try this and it works. That citric solvent does some pretty cool things. 
And how much is a quart of that stuff? It's sold by the quart. It almost seems like you need to sell it. We, uh, yeah, we sell, it, we sell it in a quart and we sell it by a pint. A quart is about $20. It goes a long way. And a pint, I, I believe, is uh, like fourteen ninety five, fifty bucks. The shower like that, you're going to need at least a pint. It's not a quart. Uh, yeah, but you know, if it's if it's a shower like that and you're getting seven fifty, what is what's twenty bucks? Yeah. Oh when yeah, you, I'm not complaining. Because because in the yeah. you know in reality, two years ago, if that shower was that bad, you'd have to use acid. After you're done using acid, you'd have to repolish the whole shower. Mm -hmm. Because the acid so would etch all the travel. That, you're gonna take that. It's a cream, basically. For people don't know, it's uh, you'd think it was vanilla yogurt. And you're going to put it in a uh, little bucket or tub or some kind of your, your hog's hair and do some of the scrubbing by hand and other scrubbing with the Makita. Yeah. And yep. that got, uh, you'll get certain situations where just, the, just a, uh, a terry cloth towel and the little fingers on there provide enough agitation to work certain things off. So it's a kind of a combination of tools. But uh, don't wear your brand new uniform into that shower, that's for sure. Put on, or at least turn your shirt oh, yeah. inside out and put on some ratty painter pants because you're going to splatter yourself like you wouldn't believe. I've got a seven-minute video that I'm, it, it, I can show, and Julio that, that did it, he, and he's, he, um, he does all our marketing stuff, and um, he's a good dude. He had a friend that did it, and he was using a backer pad. You'll see how much, how much of a mess a bigger backer pad, but he's a disaster when it's done. But, it, but, yeah. but, it, but the results of what he did in the shower... Um, but it's a, it's a, it's like a seven minute video, but it explains the process and I'm ready to play it if you guys want to see it. I'd love to see it. Okay. So get out of this. Get into this. Now everybody can say they got in the shower with Mark Sager. <laughs> It, and I apologize for the, uh, for the <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the wrong one. Everybody oh, say Jeepers. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Jeepers. One for the boys in the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Um, there you go. Right there. Hey, I, hey Sorry, like I said, I, uh, I'm actually I looking for the MSDS sheet on the stump row. I love it. Um, yeah, you can go to. Oh, we got a ton of that stuff. On you the show. you can go to that. You can go to the Stone Pro online, and all the all the in, materials, the data sheets are there. All right, this is the right one, but it's got the same music, so I apologize, uh, guys. I'm just curious. <laughs> what did he say? It's got what bad music? Yeah, it's well, yeah. You can turn it down now if you want. I won't. I don't blame you. It's it's got a ways to go. I'll, and I'll and I'll skip it. ahead a few in a few places here. I but didn't I didn't hear any music. Man, that's a nasty. So that's that's a slate. Uh, that's not a porcelain. No, that's slate. Like, right? that's, that's slate, Mike. Uh, it's a combination of a uh, soap scum and hard hard water deposit and all the mold growing yep. off of it. Now keep in mind, this guy's a good guy, but he's our he's our marketing guy and uh, <laughs> uh, does a lot of stuff for us. But he uh, yeah. have you messed around with changing the consistency of the Stone Pro or the uh, Stone Scrub to where maybe you you could uh, make it? Well, I guess the, you know the thickness of it makes it cling, which is a good thing. Uh, he's gonna get yeah. on the pad here in a minute. Yeah. That's the problem when you're using thin acids; is they run down the they run down the wall and they create drips. And sometimes we're yep. getting those drips out. Of but, there. If, but if you notice here, he's just he's going to get on the machine here in a second. But he's just done this little area by hand. And I always tell everybody: if you take before and after shots, take it while it's wet. It looks a lot better, right, Mike? Jeez, yeah. So what did he just spray on there? I'm not reading it. I'm too busy he just, talking. That was the crystal clean. All he did was use the, the, a neutral cleaner to get it to get it uh, to get it dry. I mean, to get the residue off. So there's what. But he's going to use the machine now, and he's going to get all that stuff off of there. All right, let's get into the, the meat and potatoes of this.
So he's going to get plastered by that spittle there. And you can't, oh, yeah. It's not like you can use a sling ring on the wall. And he's using a white pad. Um, I'd use something more aggressive than the white pad. Such as what, a hog's hair? Or I'd use a hog's hair or a hog's hair extreme or a gorilla pad. Nothing uh, VCT-wise, like red or brown or blue? or. Uh, on the slate, you could probably get away with the green or a red. If that were marble, I wouldn't go any more aggressive than a Hawks Eric Screen. And basically, for for those that don't know what a Hawks Eric Screen is, if, you, if you're familiar with the diamond impregnated pads, those are Hawk, Hawks Eric Screen pads that, that they impregnate the diamonds on. That's just water. Look at them nice shoes he's got on. <laughs> yeah, he needs he needs a squatty potty to sit on to, to do that work. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me jump ahead a little bit. <laughs> I, I keep to get jumping dirty. ahead, but the music doesn't get any better. <laughs> I can't hear the music. <laughs> oh, he's getting dirtier now. Yeah, wait till you look at him. <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Hey, well, this... and, I, and again, Julio's one cool cat, but if Julio can do it, anybody can do it. So all the corners and the crevices on the slate, is he going to come back in there with a uh, wire brush or something to get all that? That's the problem with slate is, you know, it's not flat, and you got to get all that water deposit, soaps come and crud out of the the shaling, if you want to call it that, and those flat scrubbers don't necessarily get it. Yeah, well, the thing is with the, with the if you go to the three-inch backers like he's got now, Mike, it hangs over the pad about a quarter of an inch, maybe not a quarter of an inch, but a little bit less than that. You can see he's getting all the way in the corner. Now, maybe in the up, right up against the wall, you'd have to use a wire brush, but you're pretty much getting in that whole area. Hey, Rob, a guy that does only stone, and he's working you know, five, six days a week. How much time does he get out of one of them Makitas? Hour-wise, that's hard to say. I'm um, buying one a year. It's. Uh, I, I mean, they get the Makitas seem to just outlast them all. Um, I've got guys. I special ordered DeWalt's for some guys um, because they like them because they're a true variable speed. Uh, nice job, Julio. Time to change your clothes. Um, <laughs> Because of the wall, yeah, and there you are. I mean, it's pretty simple. Nice. Now, would he he didn't do any enhancing in there. Nope. Wow. And did he run, uh, you know, a steam cleaner gadget, a spinner, gecko, something on no, there? Or just no, we don't. Gun? We don't. We don't deal with any of that kind of stuff. I understand that equipment because I get to. I, I'm lucky enough to get to work with a lot of. Carpet cleaners, but this is just strictly the Makita and, and the backer pads and the pads that we talked about. And it's called Stone and Glass Scrub. We changed the name of our Stone Pro changed the name of it so guys weren't afraid to use it on glass. Um, and for the guys that are you're out not, there, uh, you're not rinse, rinsing that off. You're not even taking like the hose off the shower head. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, he, he probably rinsed it off somehow. I, I wasn't there, but it was. Uh, but yeah, you rinse all that stuff down. Yeah, I know. I've I've cleaned a lot of stone showers and never brought my truck in. I did them with razors, brushes, and then the, the you know, the, the shower heads that have the hose on there. That was enough to rinse everything I broke loose off, dried it up, sealed it, and it's good to go. Never brought the truck in. Agitation chemical. Tom Thumb was wondering how much was that. I'm I'm going to anticipate how much was that job worth. That was just we just saw there. I'm a um, pair of designer Levi's and a polo shirt going for these days. <laughs> no, I mean it for me. I mean if it were no that that job right there. That's if if I'm not getting paid seven fifty minimum to do it just a regular size shower, I'm gonna let somebody else do it. It's it's there's a lot there's a lot of other things I'd be doing to to, to making the same amount of money. Yeah. That was a three minute video or whatever. That guy was in there a long time. You're squatting, like yeah. you know, if you're working up above your your uh, your shoulders, you're putting all that pressure on the Makita. The stuff's in your face. And let's not to mention all the content of that black funk in those corners. You know what that is, and you know you got to deal with that. 
Uh, yep. Derek is asking, why not use your truck mount with high, P, high PSI spinner cleaner? Um, water pressure doesn't remove that. I mean, it'll get a certain level off. Uh, if you go over 1,000 PSI on slate, in particular, you're going to etch it. You're going to create rings all over it, and it's going to look like the Olympic insignia. Yeah, not, on, not, only that, you, not only that, Mike, you're going to splinter it. Yeah, you're going yeah, you're gonna to blow some of the shaling off, uh, whatever you call the, the layers or leveling of shale. And water alone does not remove all that crud. You've got to use that acidic, chemi acidic chemical and agitation. That's, that's the key. So, yeah, I, I haven't used a hand spinner in years. I use the PMF, uh, I call it the upholstery tool for tile. It looks just like one of their upholstery tools, but it has a, a scrubby ring around the, the vacuum orifice and, and the internal jets, and I just use that for rinsing. Most of it is all hand work. For right, Rob, what's this, uh, going on here? Okay, um, basically just kind of what makes calcium-based stone uh, dull, and that would be the, the, the travertines or the limestones and the marbles that we work on. Um, a lot of guys get called from a customer and they say, you know, I'm my, my, can you come clean my marble? It's dull. Uh, the answer is, just, yeah, I can come clean your marble and it's, it's dull, but when I get done, all you're going to have is very clean, dull mar marble. The dull marble doesn't have anything to do with, with being clean or dirty. It's got damage on it. So what we're going to talk about next is maintenance, making the marble or the travertine polished. We're not talking anything restoration. We're not talking anything about removing damage as far as scratches or damage. We're taking, we're going to, we're talking about damaging, taking, we're talking about walking into a situation where the marble has been dulled or damaged or scratched and try to make it look the best we can. You spill a glass of wine or a cup of coffee on a, on a marble vanity, you can bring that full polish back up. But like you said in the beginning, Mike, if it's damaged, if it's pitted or if it's pooled, that damage is still going to be there, but it's going to be really shiny. And in today's world, guys, that's what customers are willing to pay for. Because when it comes to taking the damage out and it adds four, five, six steps to what you're doing, chances are that 36 by 24 vanity or 6 foot by 24 vanity, it was a prefab marble vanity that they bought at Home Depot for 450 bucks, so they're not going to pay you to take to, yeah. to spend a day in there doing four or five steps to to do the restoration. Okay, hey, Rob, and all dull stone is is the light is being deflected away instead of reflected up. Right, Rob, let me uh, finish up. There's two there's two questions here regarding the shower work. Cause I can I can tell we're moving on to showers, but Tom Thumb was asking after you clean it, can it be sealed? Uh, most good sealers need a dry surface, so uh, if you soak down that shower, and most showers you're usually doing some grout repair, silicone repair in the joints, um, you want to get it dry to the touch. You don't want any standing water. Some sealers, you got to read the instructions, some, some of them want it bone dry, so you might need to leave a, a fan in there overnight. Um, but I find that at least half the showers we do, we got to come back in a few days to seal it up, because we're going to open up fix cracks, uh, remove rotted material, spray disinfectant in there, and then leave a blower in there to, to dry it out. Uh, Tom's next question was sealing it so it won't get like that again. Uh, unfortunately, sealer won't prevent uh, hard water and soap scum and mold from sticking to a surface, particularly slate. The sealer is just going to make it easier to clean and keep it from staining internally, but all that crap is going to continue to uh, attached. That's the only way to avoid that is by the customer taking a towel at the end of each shower and wiping all that stuff off, uh, installing a water softener in the house, and not using white bar soap. The, the biggest favor you can do your customers is get them off a of white bar soap and into glycerin or olive oil soap because 90% of the problems you run into in showers is caused from uh, Dial and Dove and other uh, white bar soaps which have tallow in them, which is animal fat. And that's what attracts the mold. Yep, and I'll, there you go. and I'll explain that more when we get to the. I'll explain that more, Mike, when we get to the granite countertop, because that's what Dahl's granite countertop. That that was an awesome point. Um, okay. Yeah, when it comes to when it when it comes to uh, to the ceiling, um, Mike's right. There's there's nothing that's that's gonna that's gonna solve that problem. 
It may help a little bit because it doesn't pull the mineral as far into the stone. Because as the water is as the water carries the mineral into the stone, it pulls it farther into the stone, even impregnates it into the stone to some point. Mm -hmm. And that's where it gets really tough to to uh, to take it off. So it will help. It will make it easier for the next time you come back. Um, but we don't want there to be anything out there that keeps that from happening again because we need to get back into that shower next year for seven hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> Rob, I've been staring at this picture for five minutes now, and other than the the marble down below, what the hell is that? <laughs> I can't tell. It's a piece of glass. It was well. I was waiting for you to stop talking. I just no. While that is, it just show you. It, it's a fence that shows where it's been polished. You can see the reflection of behind it, where it's where it's dull. Just the difference in the reflection that where the line is in the middle. It's polished on one side, not polished on the other. A fence. Okay. Yeah, but the fence is behind it. So there you are. All right. So um, I got polishing travertine floors. This falls right in line with marble. What we're going to do now is there's three ways to do maintenance work. And, and what, what's going to amaze you as you watch? First of all, we just done showers. There's no learning curve there, guys. If you can hold the Makita, you can clean the shower. The three things that we're going to go through now, the first two take no learning curve again. Um, we're going to talk about different. The crystallizing is basically a spray buff type thing um, that, that will take care of like etching. Uh, marks from a, a cup in a bathroom where they've, uh, let me back up. When we talk about etching and staining, a lot of times people get marks on their vanities and they think they're watermarks. There's no such thing as a watermark. All of those marks are for something acidic. They rinse their mouth out with a cup after they, after they brush their teeth and a little bit of toothpaste gets on the bottom of that cup and they set it down. Next time they pick that cup up, there's a ring because of the acid in the toothpaste. Um, makeup, all of it's got acid in it, and that's where all those things come from. If they're light etching from situations like that, crystallizing, it will take those uh, etch marks away. I think crystallizing on countertops is a little bit more acceptable than being on a floor. Unfortunately, a lot of the videos and things that I had were on floor, so that's what we're going to look at, but the process is the same. Um, if the if the Etching is a little bit deeper. We can go to the diamond impregnated pads. And as you'll see in a minute, those could be monkey pads, spinergy pads, vortex pads. There's all different types of, of polishing pads or DIPs. And then on your deeper etch marks, you can move the powders, whether it be 5X, Diamond Renew, MB22, MB12, all the different types of powders that are out there. Um, a lot of the, because the, with the powders, how they react with the acid. And some of these powders like um, like the Diamond Renew, have 600 grit or maybe a little bit higher diamond abrasive in them that will take care of some of the, some of the etching. Um, for the stuff that's bad, if, if you've got a, a floor or say you've got a countertop where somebody uh, spilt toilet bowl cleaner, that countertop's got to be restored. You can make it shiny, but you're not going to take care of the damage. So we're going to go through the process. I've got some befores and afters to show you, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Any questions before we move on? We good? Mm hmm All right, there's a lot of stuff out there about crystallizing what it is and what it isn't. It's got a lot of pros and cons. First of all, let me say it's not a, it's, it has some wax, wax motion, uh, waxy motion in it, but it's not a wax. It's not a coating. The floor still breathes, regardless of what you hear. Um, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a lower level polish than what the powders do. Um, when guys point to crystallization being bad, they point to Vegas. We've all been to Vegas. I can tell you that hotels like, like the Manley Bay and the Mirage, they, they crystallize the same place in the hotel every four days. They crystallize too much. That's why it's damaging the floor. Anybody tells you that the floor, that the crystallizer is a coating or a wax and the floor can't breathe, Ask them two questions. Why does it have to be sealed? And why after it's crystallized, if I spill an acid on it, why does it still etch? Because a floor that etches still breathes. Because if it was a wax, the acid in the, in the acid that I spill on that floor is not going to etch a floor because there's wax on the floor. Okay? And there's pros and cons to all of it. 
The pros for crystallizing is it's quick and easy. It's inexpensive. If you don't crystallize in, in, in this business, you're not going to do very much commercial work. Okay? Because the hard, how it hardens the floor and how it increases the slip resistance is important. That's why the casinos do it. The cons of crystallizing is it's not a true polish because you're building a crystal on the surface of the floor. And I think that's where a lot of people think it's a coating. You don't get near the color and you don't get near the clarity because of the crystal that you do with powders. And how does it, you walk around with these stone guys and they're always, you know, I'm sure you've heard it, they're tisk tisking it and saying, oh, this, this floor is going to fall apart, you know, and one third it's natural lifespan. But uh, have you been doing it long enough to see any, uh, see any of those floors that are being done every three or four days just start crumbling apart? Yeah, and they are. But you go to you go to the hotels. That you can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You go to you go to, to the uh, to the flamingo, and they put and they powder polish. Go look at those floors, and they powder powder polish the same area every four or five days. Those floors are worse because the acid in the five X powder they use is a lot hotter than the magnesium floor silicate that's in the crystallizer. It you, you it's easy to point to Vegas. It's too much. Everybody that's listening tonight, if you're doing your customer's house or you're doing the bank building or you're doing the yogurt shop, you're doing it maybe once a year. Maybe in a busy yogurt shop, you might be doing it twice a year. You're not going to hurt that floor. It's the acid in all of these products that, that, that degrade the veining in the softer parts of the marble. It's not the product itself. Does that make sense? Hey, Rob. Uh, yeah, I think your slideshow's stuck again because you're you're still on the uh, the fence photo. I think as long as we don't stay on one panel for too long, so just tell me to shut yeah. up and let's keep moving. Okay, so the Polish Pro Crystallizer removes light medium match marks, easy and quick. Use it with variable speed, 600 to 3,000 RPMs. Hog Star Extreme Pad. Um, you wipe the counter down or your floor. Um, Hog Star Extreme. Four to, uh, square, four to six square foot area. That's if you're a countertop. That's like two feet deep by three feet, so you're not up and down. If you're doing a floor, you can do 12 to 15 square feet at a time. And you keep buffing it wet to dry. The hardest part about this is not using too much. A quart of this product should do 1,000 to 1,200 square feet. So if I'm on a floor and I'm doing 15 square feet, I, I, I pump that, that trigger twice and spread it out. And well, I why do you use the hog's time. hair when, when the other guys, other products are using steel wool? What's the difference? Uh, it's a duck's I, we, Stone Pro has a crystallizer, a traditional pink crystallizer with steel wool has to be used. This is a unique product that we've had about 18 months where it is a crystallizer. When I do my classes, I do them side by side or let the guys do them side by side. This one has a more natural look, better color. Better reflectivity, and you're going to see that in a minute. Um, doesn't have that fake plastic look that most crystallizers have, and you don't have to use steel wool. So that means I can use it on concrete. I can use it on terrazzo. I don't blacken grout joints. I don't have to spin. Um, I can use a hog's hair extreme. A 17-inch hog's hair extreme, depending on where you buy it, runs 6 to $8, for a, for a, or 5 to $7. One mm -hmm. steel wool pad runs about $8. And a steel wool pad is only good for eight for 100 to 150 square feet. I can use one hog's hair pad for 3,000 square feet for six bucks. Wow. Um, and and the other thing is I can use this product because I don't have to use steel wool. I have a lot of customers taking care of LAX, Weber State, Salt, uh, uh, BYU, UCL, UCLA has 10 and a half million square feet of terrazzo on their campus. They don't wax anymore. They use this with a 3,000 DIP pad, and they can use their, they, they're using their high-speed burnishers, so you don't have to so use a traditional 175 machine anymore. If you got a homeowner that's got a, a poorly installed polished marble, either you know they did it themselves or you just got lippage, and they don't want to pay to have it ground. Uh, scratches aren't so much issue. They just want the shine back, and they don't want to spend a lot of money. It seems like this is the way to go. And I'm gonna and you use it with the diamond impregnated pads, and I'm gonna show you that next. Again, and because the thing is, 
for guys that, that want a boohoo crystallizer and all they do is powder polish, in today's economy, if you walk into a, a, a customer and they can't afford $2 or 250 a square foot for you to go through all the steps you have to go through to powder polish, you can, you can crystallize and charge them a dollar a square foot, give them a little bit better polish. When a gallon of crystallizer does 6,000 square feet, and you're a not buying it, pardon me? A little bit better than what? Well, your powders are better. You get a better polish than powders with, when you're yeah, using you powders. But by, by doing crystallizing, you're giving them a little bit better polish. Polish than what they're, they have? They're, they're, you're, you're improving the condition of their floor. You're giving them a better polish than what they have when you walk in. Does that make sense? Hello? Yep. Okay. We're there. So you're going in you're going in to give them a you're going in to give them a polish, but they can't afford two dollars a foot for you to powder. You don't have to walk away. You can do this for a dollar a square foot and make ninety three to ninety five cents a profit because it's so inexpensive and so fast to do. I think Mikey got booted off again. Uh, one quick question there too: How would uh, the uh, Polish Pro hold up in a shower? Someone asked. Because you make the stone, because the crystal that you build is harder than the stone you put it on, yeah. it will last longer than a powder. Um, and it also, uh, like on the floor of the shower, you'll increase the slip the slip resistance on the floor of the shower by crystallizing than you would use in a powder. I'm back. I hit my mute okay. button on accident. That's right. All right. So basically, I know these pictures are kind of, but on the left, you've got some cremiform mar marble that's got a 400 grit finish on it here. On the right, that is the uh, just with the Polish Pro. One step. How did you apply the Polish Pro there? Okay. One you missed step. it okay. on, and you buff it. You missed it on, and you buff it with the hog's hair pad. Got it. Okay. Wow. And we're, I'm going to show you, okay, so now let me show you, let me get out of this, and I'll show you. What I'm, I'm using a burnisher, and I, I, this video is done on green marble purposely because if you've ever been around the serpentine green marble, it is a bitch to polish. So, Rob, how does it, this process deal with lippage? Is, are you able to get in there and do a decent enough job and not create picture framing, or is it still yes. letting me know this? Yes. No, no you, you can eliminate the picture frame unless it's... If it's a sixteenth or, or less, you can eliminate the uh, picture framing. Okay. okay. Here's the music again. So when I'm using a, uh, a high-speed burnisher in here, which is a big advantage, you're not using steel wool. I can use a machine that goes 1,500 RPMs and increase the time. Um, so the, the pad on the right is the extreme. The pad on the left is just a regular hog's hair. Is there audio on this video, Rob? Because we're not hearing anything. Really crummy music. Just music? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you can see on the right, we demo, we had acid, we had etch marks, and we had uh, about a about an 800 finish on the green. What's the story with that machine with the offset head like that? It's just a high-speed burnisher, and it's an advantage for the guys that have them because they, they increase, because you're creating so much heat so fast, right at 1,500 RPMs, you can crystallize twice as fast now than, than you can with the swing machine. The fact that we're not using steel wool, I can crystallize as fast as these pads are rated for, which is 3,000 RPM. And you'll watch when I spray, I'm only putting two, and I'm doing what, one, two, three, four, I'm doing eight square feet there. And I'm putting very little product down on the floor. And I would never crystallize it at, at, at an 800 uh, grit finish. But I do it in this video to kind of give you an idea of how much difference crystallizing can make. Hmm. So the right side of that floor looked like the left side of the floor before we started. And that's dry and done. Yep. And no steel wool to worry about or pick up. No dark grout joint. Yeah. Uh, is there any enhancer out there? Maybe that new stuff Cameron's talking about that could add a little more color to that, or no? 
Normally, when the when the when the steel is, I don't know what what when he's um, got out. There's some really strong enhancers out there that are in the old uh, the old good solvent stuff. But normally, on a lot of your polished stones, there's not a lot that you can do that I'm aware uh, of. Ricky T is saying he uses an OP machine, which isn't a very heavy machine. It's uh, under well under 100 pounds. Uh, what are you seeing, Rob? You know, the oscillating pad machine. I think you were messing around with the uh, Trinity at some point, or maybe that was another company. Yeah, no, I was, I was, uh, I, I, I uh, because they're in San Diego, Mike, I do, I, I deal a lot with the uh, Haas or the Orbot. Uh, and is that more effective than a standard 175 with a weighted dry plate? Uh, not for the crystallizing. It does work, but it takes longer. Um, but when it comes to cutting with diamonds, and uh, doing the powder polishing, it's pretty efficient. More efficient than a similar weighted 175? Yeah, because, because, because you're hitting the floor about 1,750 and, and, uh, times a minute. So when you're, when you're running a 175 machine, um, you're only, only, depending, if you're going to the right, only the front part of the machine is on the floor. When you're coming back to the left, only the back part of the machine is on the floor. When you've got a 17 or 20 inch head on on an on a orbital machine, that whole machine is on the floor, and you literally in three to four passes, walking like a like it's a lawnmower, um, you can you can in in four passes you can do what it takes 10 to 12 passes to do um, on a on a regular 175. Difference is there, you know, you're talking a $700 machine versus a uh, either a 2900 or a $4,000 machine. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're getting close here. I know it's, it's we're dragging on, but it's getting... So then if you've got a little bit deeper um, etch marks, you can go to your diamond impregnated pads. We call them dips. I just listed the, the most popular ones that are out there. Um, they, they have their place in the industry. They're not for marble. They do a great job on travertine, and that's what I'm going to try to show tonight. If you use them on marble, I've, I've met a lot of guys out there that have used monkey pads or spinnergy pads or some of the other ones that are out there because, well, the monkey pads and the spinnergy pads, they come in grits starting like at 200 or 400, and they don't cut flat. So there's a lot of guys that are orange peeling and accidentally leathering marble out there because of the flexibility. They bite into the softer parts of the marble. On travertine, I never use a DIP pad on marble under 1500. I don't ever use them on on limestone under 3000. Um, but they're great on on travertine because customers want different levels of patina. I had a call today. A guy said I have a customer that's got 3000 square feet of travertine and they want a high they want a high satin finish. <laughs> what the heck's a high satin finish? But it gives you the different levels. It's shinier than a low satin finish. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's you know that's funny. I think you're right, exactly right. So here's the true facts about the DIPs. They're great maintenance and cleaning system. And and when diamond and pregnant pads were first came out, and it was HTC or the twister pads, they they market them as maintenance and cleaning pads, not polishing pads, not rescue pads, not restoration pads. But they're great for doing terrazzo, concrete, limestone, and travertine and VCT. Um, Use them on 175 buff, uh, buffers, burnishers, or auto. I have I have one guy. Um, uh, we all know Ron Lapold, right? He's taken. He's using this on buffers, uh, not anymore, but for a couple years. He uh, he was using uh, 12 or 12 inch DIP pads on a walk behind scrubber nightly. His guys were taking care of a 50,000 square feet of of uh, uh, terrazzo in a casino in uh, in New Mexico. Um, they leave a, a great satin or patina finish. Um, you don't need any experience. All you got to be able to run a machine. They're they're pretty inexpensive for as long as they last, but they don't cut flat, and it's not an option on most marbles. The false facts are they remove scratches and damage. Um, it's a good way to polish marble. Uh, they re they replace the traditional diamond disc. They don't. Um, that they uh, uh, they don't need to, to chemically polish. I, I wrote that down wrong. Um, and that you can compete with guys that are doing traditional outer polishing and, and, and diamond work. But it gives you it gives you something you can add to your business as long as you're op, um, 
off, uh, honest with your customers. Propion Travertine offer several uh, levels of, of a polished satin or patina finish, um, and there's really no mess to them. So these are the Stone Pro pads or the Revolution pads, the M1, the M2, and the M3, which is an 800, and a 1500, and a 3000 grit. You know, here's the process. So what you see here on the left side, that is a piece of travertine from the factory out of the box, about a 400 grit. On the right, we've got an M1 pad, and, and what you can kind of see is you get a little bit more color, a little bit less chalky look, because your 800 grit, grit scratches are smaller or, or uh, more minute, you expose less of the calcium, so you get more color. Okay, so here's your, now you've got your M1 pad, when you go to the M2, you get rid of a lot of the chalkiness, and now you're starting to get a lot more color, but not a lot of reflection. And all the guys that come through the store, and all the guys that come through the boot camp, and all the guys that come through the class, leave with, an, with a, a sample board of this, so they can walk into their customers and say, what type of set and finish are you looking for? And not only does it, it help their customer and for them to know what the expectations are, they can set it on the travertine and get a feel for where their travertine is at the time. So if they walk in and their travertine looks like the M2, they know they can go right to M3. They don't have to mess around with the other pads. Okay, so now you've got the M2 we just saw and the M3 on the right. Now we've got more reflection and even more color. The really cool thing we've learned with this, if we take that M3 pad and on that same step with the M3 pad, and let me back up. The M1 and the M2, the M1 we run with water. The M2 we go wet to dry. The M3 we run, run dry. So we have no water. We have, we have no mess. We have no extracting. We have no buffing afterwards. If you take the Polish Pro Crystallizer that we just saw and you add it when you're using the M3 pad, here's what you get. So a guy with no experience other than running a machine can go in with these pads and do two or three steps and polish travertine to a, to a pretty decent level. That's no learning curve. Three steps? Tell, tell us I, again I, the, the I, grids guys, guys three are making steps. 800, 1500, and 3000. But a lot of guys might walk into a situation where they set their, they set their sample board down on the M3 and it's pretty close to that. All they know is they got to they got to add a little polish pro, and that's what they're going to get. This sample board, you can't do it with marble, but you can certainly do it with travertine. It takes all the guesswork out of what they're doing. You walk in with a little sample and set it on yeah. the floor and say, "Mrs. Smith, what do you want? I want that." Then he but, looks and says, but, "Okay." Yeah. I'm sorry. Was her question? Uh, by taking the travertine to that level of shine, you're dense. Yeah, can Every you hear time me, Rob? Talks, yeah, I do now. Go ahead, Mike. Okay. When you take a travertine, to, geez, when you take a travertine to that level of shine, you're densifying the stone correctly, so it's going to be less porous. Can it stay cleaner longer? Uh, yeah, because your scratches are smaller. Uh, let me go back a couple, and I'll I'll, I'll show you. Um, okay, the difference, like on this slide here. The M2 pad, that's a, that's a 1,500 grit scratch pattern. The M3 pad is a 3,000 grit scratch pattern. So as you as you lessen the scratches or you make the scratches more uh, minute, it reflects more light. And the more minute they are, the less porous the travertine becomes. Then when you add the crystal of the of the Polish Pro on top of that, it's still porous, but it's a lot harder. And a lot less porous than it was at a 400 or an 800 grit. That's exactly right, Mike. Okay. Okay. So now we did all those slides. So this was the very first slide I showed you at 400 out of the box. Taking this in three steps, one with a little bit of water out of a spray bottle, one with the water out of a spray bottle wet to dry, and another in, in the third step with a 3000 DIP and Polish Pro, that's what you can offer your customers. And the really cool thing we do at the, at the boot camp is all of this stuff I'm showing you with 17 different types of floors in the warehouse, when guys ask me questions, I don't give them the answer. I say, here's the products. 
You want to try monkey pads, here's monkey pads. You want to try this pad, you want to try this powder, this powder, this powder. Here's your floors. You go do and you see what works for you. Don't, don't take my word for it. Go see what works for you. And, and they're able to, because what works for somebody doing work in Madison, Wisconsin, isn't going to be the same as what works for a guy doing it in Anaheim, California. Or Ocala, uh, Florida. So I try to give you as many different options, and not, not say one is good, one is bad, this is better, this is worse. Here are your options. You choose the bullets you put in your gun, and then go make money. Somebody's asking down there, do you start with an M1 first to go to M2 and end up with an M3? Let me see. They're looking for the best shine, they're asking. Yeah, um, it depends on that. That's where the sample piece comes in. Now, let me go back again. If you go into your customer's house, let's just say, and they've got a polish that's close to this M2 versus the M1, when they set that down on the floor and they go, yeah, I'm not quite that chalky and I got a little bit, because when you look at the M2, if you look kind of in the, just below center, kind of on the right-hand side, you can kind of see where it's reflecting a little bit of light. Where the left-hand side, there's no light. They can say, okay, I know it's at an M2. So all I got to do is go to the M3 with the Polish Pro and I'm good. It's so you don't have to, you could start at the M2 and not have to start at the M one, so to speak, if you're already at what's considered a two on the yes. zone you're starting on. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I tell guys all the time, when you go into any situation, because I hear a lot of times what, you know, we come to your class or we do this and it's a controlled environment and we can make everything work, but when we go out in the real world, there's nothing controlled. And 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 to me that's that's not true. If you go in prepared and you take four or five square feet and what you think is going to work in your mind, and you do a test of, okay, I think I can, this, this travertine floor is in pretty good shape. I think I can go just M3 with the Polish Pro, and that works in that area. That's what you repeat. If I do my M3 and it doesn't make any difference, and it doesn't change the floor, that means the damage in my floor is, is, is too much for my M3 to fix, which means i got to drop down a step. If I walk into a situation and think, I got to start at M1 and work my way up on on this floor, and my M1 makes the floor worse. Then I'm starting too low. The biggest mistake that in this industry is everybody's talking about hone and polish, hone and polish. Why would I hone unless I'm removing damage? Why would I ever make a floor worse before I make it better? My first step should improve the stone, and then let me work from there to making it worse so it adds a step or two. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Are these M? What's the M stand for? Uh, that stands for what did they when they named it? That stands for uh, method. Was it not method? Uh, it's like I forgot what they were. It was like step one, step two, step three. They could do 800, 1500, but you it know, like matter, Twister, they don't, they don't other... have any steps. They go, they go red, wh yellow, white, and green. <laughs> it's like super. It's like super secret. Um, okay, let me get out of this, and I just have a quick video that I did. It's real raw. Um, it's about 15 seconds of a uh -oh. set. This is a this is the board that guys leave the. The guys leave the the uh, workshop or the boot camp with hey, Rob, to go out, and you're, got, you'll see. Rob, we got stuck on this. You're before stuck and after. You don't see before and after. after travertine shot. We stayed nope. there too long. Stuck on before and after. All right. Yeah. All right. Hold on. That's strange. I thought I had this all. I even got on early and tried to work all this out. I don't know. Um, bottom right, exit. I got it. Bottom right I'm there. good at this now. Yeah. <laughs> Windows 10 fighting to take over the world. Yep. <laughs>
You see that? Revert back to Windows. Still 7. black screen. It did it no, again. It's black. God dang. Yeah. You know, I can't see my screen. Is there anybody left in there? Kind of watch this. Um, yeah, we're, 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 there's still people here. Yeah, you're still black screen there for your friends. All right. Um, Opt out again, I guess. There we go. Johnny Bravo. This is what happens on. when old guys try to use high technology. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> hmm. Apologies, everybody. We uh, had a practice session yesterday, and between my uh, having to use a different computer today due to the travel and whatever, it's cursing Rob here. Not quite Rob's sure. Still with us. Mark, we booted off. Uh, there he's <laughs> back. Yep. All right, let's, let's try this again, guys. Okay. Yeah, like I said, let's just keep moving. Every time we stall for more than like four or five minutes, the screen locks. Look, can you go. see the screen now? Yep. Yeah, we see it, but you need to go back to your uh, slideshow. I think he's going to a video. Is what he's. Hey, can you see this? Video. Okay. Yep, we're okay. on it. Yes. Okay, so this is. I'm going to start it over. This is a, a piece of travel. You can see where we hone it. I hone is pretty much out of the box, so you'll be able to see. What happens if you watch? There's a light above, and you'll be able to see how the difference that each step of the DIPs makes. And then that's the 3,000. And then as soon as we add the polish pro, the clarity gets much better. Wow, that's pretty good. So, all right. All right, so after this, we've got the, 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 the powders. And I put the 5X Summer Room in these marble polish, but a lot of guys use MB-22, a lot of guys use MB-12, a lot of guys use Dye Glow. Powders are the powders. Um, we uh, The EMP is a new powder that Stone Pro just come out with. And what's made this awesome for everybody, it's a lot like the MB-22 from MB Stone Care. It burns nothing. Guys need no experience to be able to use this powder. Um, you don't need to... You don't need to uh, neutralize it. Um, when you're using all the other powders because of the acid, now both the MB-22 and the Easy Marble Polish, they are acidic, but they have buffers in them that allow guys to drink. You can, you can literally leave these, these powders on the floor, go home, eat dinner, have a good night's sleep, and come back and then clean them up, and they don't, they don't have a problem. Uh, there's no etching. So there, it's taken a lot of the learning curve out of the marble polishing. A lot of the, the uh, marbles that are hard to polish, like some of the, the serpentines and the browns and the blacks, this does a great job. Um, the pros are some of the powders like uh, Dye Glow and Diamond Renew remove light scratches because of the 600 grit abrasive that's in them. They leave a harder, flatter finish, which gives you better clarity and reflection and color. Um, the cons, it's a slower process. You have to charge more for it. Um, you have to vacuum up most of the powders. You have to neutralize most of the powders, and you have to spend a lot more time preparing and masking off because of the water that you're using. So what we're through this, this is just the, uh, the uh, application you put it on. And this is uh, talking about countertops on the floors. You're using, you're working 30 to 40 square foot uh, sections and the time you work it. Again, just a before and after that I did in the, in the store real quick, took some Roja Alicante. Took a 800 diamond to it, took all the polish off, and uh, this was actually done with uh, uh, the diamond renew. And then this is done with uh, uh, on a cream marfil or travertine with the EMP. This is from a 400 grit travertine piece. So we took a 400 grit, skipped all the steps of the um, diamond impregnated pads, and, uh, and we worked the EMP for about three minutes on this piece. And it's hard to see in this picture, but the surface is just flatter because you're not building a crystal that can dis dis distort the light, and you're working with the stone. So where a crystallizer, you're building a crystal on the surface and kind of making a fake polish because you're not really polishing the stone. These powders actually react with the calcium and, and 
and change the surface of the stone instead of adding the polish to the stone, if that makes sense. Okay, this is a customer that sent in a picture. I believe this was using a product like the uh, EMP or the MB22. Took a, took a marble vanity that was just hammered, and just the powder brought the clarity back. Same thing on this floor. No diamond work, just powder. It's a great combo. Yeah. Um, and I, I've got, uh, do you, you want to see a powder being worked or you want to just move on, Mike? You want to see a video of the powder being worked or you want to move on? And finish up. It's up, to you. it's up to you, Rob. I say play it. All right. So this powder is the Diamond Renew, but most of the powders work the same way except the MB-22 and the, um, the EMP, the Easy Marble Polish, doesn't have to be neutralized. And you don't have to, uh, you can go farther without, before you extract it. There's that music again. Can you hear the music? Nope. No. Uh. I'll go check it out after the show here. <laughs> Good for you guys. Why don't you hum it for us, Rob? No. <laughs> it's bad. One, right? Yeah, you know, you can use a honks hair extreme. You can use a regular... Yeah, you can use a honks hair. And that's, a, that's an eight... We stopped basically at 800 grit finish. Um, on this floor, um, you can use a hog's hair stream, a hog's hair, or a white pad, whatever you prefer. There's no mention of putting water on the floor. You're not doing that dry, right? Yeah, no, we're, it's uh, it's uh, work the slurry. Yeah. When you're when you're doing five X diamond roots and all the other. Go ahead, Mike. I've done this process a few times. Uh, <laughs> we got a bad delay. I'm sorry, man. No, go ahead. I'll be quiet. Go ahead, Mike. Keep going, Rob. Uh, oh, I'm just saying I've done this a few times with. Uh... <laughs> I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> I know. All I'm going to say, and then I'll be quiet. When you're using the 5X Diamond Rue or some of the more acidic powders, you really have to be careful to check more often. If you're using the EMP powder, you just go to town and don't worry about it. And the polish, if the if the 5X or the Diamond Renew is a 10 on the polishing scale, the EMP is going to be a 9.3, and your customer is not going to know the difference. There's just no danger in using the EMP. These powders take a little bit more practice. I'm done, Mike. Go ahead, bud. Keep going, Rob. Doesn't matter. Keep going. I'm just I'm enjoying I'm just gonna finish the video. You, if you want to say something, go ahead. I'm I'm done. All we're doing here now is we're just I'm taking the vacuum, I'm not vacuuming up. I'm just checking my polish. I'm finding a a light in the ceiling to see the quality of the uh, of the polish. And then I'm gonna work it another few passes and I'm gonna check it again. If it's better, I'm gonna go another few. If it doesn't, if it's if it's about the same. That's how I know when I'm done. And then I repeat that process over the entire house. But your sample size when you go into a house to polish a floor should be no larger than this. And this is right here is about 20 square feet we're doing. Hey, Rob, uh, there's a question here. Uh, where did it go? Can you use this polish powder on marble? Uh, seems to be a little bit of confusion over that. Yeah, we're doing marble right now. You can you, all these all these powders will work on marble and travertine. There's there's uh, they all work on the travertine marble, depending on the color and the type of the marble and the calcium level and the minerals that make up a marble. The powders will vary a little bit. Most, what I tell most guys, if you have, when you're talking Stone Pros products, if you have Diamond Renew, um, 
EMP and a polish and polish pro on your truck, you'll never run into a situation where you won't be able to polish the marble that you're working on. You can tell I'm not a carpet cleaner. I'm a really crummy extractor. Yeah, this is all being done after you've removed scratches and etching and any other damage. You've already ground it down, taken care of that, and this is the last step, or the only step if it's a good floor, but just dull, correct? Yeah, if it's just dull and doesn't have damage, and, and, and really a lot of what our industry does is this now because customers aren't, aren't able to afford 3 or $4 a square foot for you to do six steps to remove their damage. So if it's just wear patterns and doll or somebody spilled something on the floor, um, you know, and in reality, too, if there's restoration work to be done. Uh, Mike, if you and I are a team and we're working out there, the money's made into polishing. So you're polishing, and I'm in the area where there's damage, and I'm taking care of the damage and feathering out to whatever grit we decide to feather out to. So the, pol the polishing never stops. We're not running 220, 400, 800 grit diamonds in, in a 1,000 square foot area. We're polishing a 1,000 square foot area. We're taking care of the damage separately. Can you use these on terrazzo, this powder? Um, um, you can. It's tricky because it's it's a, if it's if it's a cementaceous type terrazzo, it's hard not to burn the Portland cement before you polish the marble. Um, that's why you see terrazzo waxed all the time because people don't know how to polish it. Um, what we do is we go to uh, uh, what we're doing at UCLA. If there's damage in LAX, is where there's damage and they refinish the floor. We'll start at a 220 and go to 400 in a, what's called the hybrid diamond. Um, but basically, they take care of it with a 3000 DIP pad and the Polish Pro. That way, the floor breathes. They don't have to keep stripping it. We're saving, we're saving UCLA so much money because they're not stripping and, and uh, uh, re, re waxing all the time. Um, it's just an easier process. Looking good. And this is a floor that we've had probably, and you can see kind of the waviness from how we cut it. Um, about three weeks after this, I had a class, and we had to we had to move the we had to move to a separate floor in the class because we were actually we were actually polishing thin set. We had worn that 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 stone so thin. Hey Rob, let's say you're yeah. working on a tra or a, sorry a travertine. They're they're happy with everything on the floor. They just have an etch mark, you know, right in the middle, right in front of the kitchen sink or the island. And they just want that, you know, maybe that one tile dealt with. What do you say? Um, with with your you can you can blending in takes some practice. Uh, for newer guys, I would say um, just price it out so you can do the entire place. But as you get better at it and you learn how to work the powders, um, I think the EMP powder has made it easier because it doesn't polish as fast because of the because it's not as it doesn't polish as hot. I guess is the right word. Um, that's where squeegee and back is important because you can polish for six passes, test it. And it's not quite there yet. Three or four more passes. Check it. And and with some of the, the powders that polish slower, um, even the Polish Pro, you can do that. You know, here's here's three applications of the Polish Pro. We're pretty close. One more application. And you can feather that and make it look and, and, and blend that in. Uh, when you work in one spot and trying to blend, there's that picture you like, Mike. Yeah, when you uh, overwork a stone, you overheat it, and you create that orange peel. How do you? How is that corrected? Is it just ground down with uh, real uh, low grit? Back, you go back to about 220, and in most stones, you work it back up. You'll go 220, 400, 800, and then repolish. Okay. Exactly what you do. Okay.
So I didn't stay on that okay. screen very long because Mike, number one, you don't you don't like it, Mike, and um, yeah, we moving. freeze there. <laughs> um, unlike the calcium-based stones we've been talking about, what makes granite dull? Detergents, surfactants, contaminants in the water. When you're looking at granite, in most cases for countertops, if the granite is dull, it is dirty. So we can bring factory finishes back to most granite countertops by just doing a, a deep clean and a light polish. Unless you've practiced for years and years and years, and um, we, we, uh, we spend some time on this in the boot camp, and guys that want to learn this will spend three days in the boot camp learning nothing but how to deal with the, the granite. And this is a process that um, after, uh, I don't know, five or six years ago when uh, Ted McFadden and Cameron showed this process to me, um, I practiced this for three years before I taught it. Because when you do diamond work on granite, you are in a completely different arena than, than doing diamond work on marble and, and travertine. And I deal with a lot of fabricators that screw up seams that come in and are scared to death of having to buy uh, the granite countertop back because they've screwed up on the seam and done their diamond work on it. So um, bringing the polish back to granite can be done chemically because the the, the, uh, the dullness or the haze doesn't come from where it comes from, how they take care of it. You think about, you know, you, you eat and you're doing dishes daily and you have the dish soap and you have hard water deposits and you wipe the counter down and you walk away. And then you have breakfast and you wipe the counter down and you walk away. If we did that same process on a window behind the sink, in two or three days we wouldn't be able to see through that window because of the soap scum or the, the fatty acids and the contaminants in the soap, the surfactants in the soap, and the minerals in the water. And as that builds up on the granite countertop, it deflects the light just like the damage that we talked about on the marble earlier. And this is kind of what we talked about um, earlier with, with what's in dish soap. And so you're, we're dealing with mineral deposits, um, we're dealing with uh, suspended solids that are in the water, and we're dealing with shampoos and conditioners that contain fat byproducts and repel water when allowed to dry solids. So that's what we're dealing with when we have countertops. Um, what, Chemicals that are needed when we're talking with Stone Pro, it's uh, the scrub, the crystal clean, the, the crystallizer again, the Polish Pro, the uh, patea, which gives us the calcium we need for the Polish Pro to work because there's no calcium in, in uh, granite. The dark patea also has some uh, graphite in it to add to the color of the, of the product. Ultimate Pro to seal it and the finishing touch to finish the last step. You need a variable speed polisher. Guys, if you're getting started in this, you don't have to, for your first couple of jobs, and I've had guys get mad at me because they, 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 they go to Harbor Freight and buy a polisher and it doesn't perform right for them and they want to know why I sent them there. But if you want a job or two under your belt, buy a $40 polisher and let the first job or two you do pay for the Makita. Um, and make sure it's something you want to add to your business. You don't need to buy a $250 Makita if you're not comfortable right off the bat. Um, but I have found, I've used Metabos, I've used Flex, I've used all different types of machines. There's a reason why 60% of the videos you watch online when it comes to doing this, what we do in this industry, everybody has a Makita. They run cooler. They don't, you, you, no matter how much pressure on them, if, if you've got it set at 1500 RPMs, it's 1500 RPMs no matter how much weight you're putting on them. They're awesome machines and they last. Um, with all the Makitas, we probably sell out of the store. We probably sell 30 of these machines a week. And I don't have, or I, I maybe have four year come back to be serviced. They're, they're just awesome machines. Um, the Lambswell Bonnet, microfiber towel, silver, and the applicator, and the, 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 the tape to mask off. So step one, basically, and I'm going to show you the video, and then we're done and I'll answer questions. But the stone scrub, just like in the showers, um, you put it on, you agitate it. A lot of times you can do a granite countertop by hand. You don't have to use, because this is the messiest part of cleaning the countertops. Um, you can put it on by hand and take the center of one of your pads and do it. I always tell guys, though, if you're going to do it by hand in the customer's home, set the machine behind you and turn it on high so they hear a machine running. You don't, they don't want to see in there doing stuff by hand. Um, 
You wipe the surface clean with the crystal clean and you repeat it again if you need it. Very seldom is it needed. If it's built up real bad around the, uh, the faucet and things where the water sits, build it, put the stone scrub around that area, agitate it and just let it build it up and let it sit for, for eight to ten minutes and it should loosen that uh, mineral up enough to at least be able to razor blade it off. Then you put a small amount of the patea. Small amount is a key word there. Um, one to two little spr spritzes of the Polish Pro and just like on the floor, you, you, re and you, you buff it wet to dry and you do that four to six times. If you seal it, then you seal it after that. Hey, Robert, are you changing the frames? Yeah, you don't see it again. <laughs> what was the last screen? You, what was the last screen you saw? Virus attached to it. What makes granite dull? What makes uh, really? <laughs> okay. Why don't? Um, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Man, well, you're getting good at it. Blacked out. Nothing now? Jeez, Louise. No, nope, it's black. This is unbelievable. Yeah. Never we sit on one frame for more than a couple minutes and it locks locks it up and kills your pooter. She can say you're the first. Old guys, I'm telling you. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. All righty, Rob back yet? There's Rob. Sorry guys, I don't. Is it me? I don't. I don't get it. It's got to be you, Rob. It's got to be. Got to be me. That's what. That's the story of my life. It's like last night's World Series game. It just <laughs> it keeps on going. Yeah. Hey. Um. Dang, we. I think just... we missed some good slides there. Okay. Well, no, Mike. Let me do. Let me just do this so they can see the process. Yeah, the and then, if, can you can you see the video? Yes, sir. Can you see? Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Let me play this so at least they can see it, and then I'll I'll because this is, this is the end of it. Um, just so they can see the process, because all the slides just explain this. And then, and then we'll just, and then I'll be done, and all we got to do is talk if there's any questions. And I apologize. If it's me, I apologize. Oh, shoot, we can't hear this. Rob, you're going to have to lip sync yourself. Gosh darn it. So you want to take the Makita and uh, lay it real gently on the stone here. And, uh, <laughs> how about them Yankees? I'm, I'm never going to be invited back. This is crazy. Um, let me get... <laughs> we can't hear your video for whatever reason. Why? None of them we could hear. I Why? Don't know. I think it's you, man. I wish I could tell you. It's like watching a kung fu movie. <laughs> you guys are killing me. I've watched this video a lot times. I could probably uh, voice it over for you. Yeah. No, that's all right. I am. Um, I, I I did get on. I did get on very early and try to make sure that this was working. But there was <laughs> everybody was busy. I didn't. So here we're going through the cleaner. The stone pro. The, the stone scrub to get rid of the minerals. Yeah. Chris clean to, to rinse it down, or you can use water. Then we're going to use the Polish Pro with the patea. That's what brings the polish back. Let's move ahead here. Get through the process. So there's the stone scrub. 
Man, that was back that was back in my bad hair days. I don't know what I was thinking. Did that Wolfman Jack thing going on? There's no talking going on right now. It's just a, so basically when you when you remove all the mineral, okay. the granite reflects light much better, so it's uh, it it looks like it's been polished. Hey, I, just for anybody that's out there, if I apologize, I don't know why you can't hear it, but at the end of this, if the if you can see the slideshow again, you're going to get my phone, my cell number, and you're going to get uh, uh, my email address. I can send you the link to this, um, or you can go to Stone Pro's website and download it. And I apologize, you can't hear it. What I just did here is put very little of the potato down. One square of the what the potato does is it adds the calcium that we need for the for the uh, Polish Pro to react with the granite. And then the uh, the graphite will add color to the uh, stone. And uh, guys that are doing stone, um, where they're not in there doing carpet, they're going to charge about three seventy-five to four hundred and fifty dollars to go in and do this. The, the one advantage that you guys have, since you're already in the house doing other services, you can do it for one seventy-five to two fifty as an add-on service because you're already there, um, and, and you should be able to do a standard size eighty or fifty to eighty square foot kitchen in a matter of, you know, a couple of hours. Hey Rob, in your class, do you go over uh, masking techniques? Yeah. Counter work and floor yeah. work. Yes, we do. We go over the masking techniques. Um, we go. I have to turn that down because I, if I, with the sound on that, I can't hear you. But um, we do that. Um, the other thing, and this will be the we had uh, the, at the last boot camp. But Steve is with us. I hired, uh, uh, or we hired uh, a gentleman about six weeks ago that was the operations manager for one of the largest restoration companies in Southern California. It was called uh, Atlas Marble and Restoration. So what we now do in the class is we've got a guy where guys can sit down and talk about um, what do you look for when you go in to uh, bid a job. Um, when you, and, and, and when you go in to estimate, uh, what are we looking for on the floor? How do we know? So a lot of the business questions, we now have a guy that's going to partner with me in this that can answer all the business side parts of the of the business. And this is a guy that was out there doing the work two months ago. So we, we can now offer a lot of the business side of, um, you know, you go in and you expect a floor, or inspect a floor. What are you looking for? How, how do I know what to look for? Um, what kind of questions can I can I uh, is the customer going to ask me, what can I expect to, to be asked? Um, you know, how do you bid different jobs? When you look at a, when you look at a job that's only 80 square feet intro, entryway, how do I price that versus a, a floor that's 800 square feet? So we, the, the, the people that are coming to the, the classes now are going to have a lot, be able to leave a lot more, with a lot more information on the business side of things. Okay, so we so just did the polish, we've added the color, we've added more reflectivity, and then we're going to seal. The Polish Pro is a pretty unique, I mean, I'm sorry, the Ultimate Pro is a pretty unique product. You know, a lot of guys think that impregnating sealers are impregnating sealers. That Ultimate Pro if that's one that you want to use, that's a product where you can give your customer a lifetime warranty on the on the sealing of the granite. It protects against water and oil. Um, 
So if, if your competitors are charging, let's just say $200 for silicon countertop, you can get a lot more than that. You can get $350, $400 because instead of telling them you got to come back next year, you can give them a, a sill that's permanent and then you find your way back in the house the following year to bring the polish back to the granite countertop so you don't lose that business. Um, what I'm doing now with the, with the uh, finishing touch is um, eliminates fingerprints and it leaves it a nice smooth finish. This kind of differentiates the process from everybody else because it gives the granite a really cool nice fill. We start low and then you'll see here I'll put a second coat on and then we turn it up high and it really makes a difference in, in what the granite feels and looks like. That lifetime sealer, Rob, uh, how do you know it lasts a lifetime? Are you, are you torture testing it with uh, high alkaline chemicals? Um, there's been a lot of testing that's gone on, and of course, I haven't been around to know that it, that's a permanent sealer and there's other. The, the matter of the fact is, when you, the, the sealant property in this is a fluoropolymer. When you're locking at 511 and a lot of the other sealers out there, they're sealing with the silicone. The silicone is brittle. Um, you have to be careful with the chemicals you use. Um, and when you when talking with the chemist, fluoropolymers don't leave anything behind. They permanently change the surface tension. Now, if this was marble or travertine, the, the stone wears away. Dupont, who is kind of the the the, the mother company or that the, the came out with the fluoropolymers, on their website, when you look at fluoropolymers or fluorochemicals, tell you it takes about 20, 20 years to wear enough marble away to where the there's no more fluoropolymer. Um, granite doesn't wear away. And I've had guys for 10 years um, selling with this product and giving them, you know, you don't have to say lifetime. You can give them five years, seven years, 10 years. Anything's better than every six to 12 months. All right. Um, and I haven't had one guy come back to me and w saying it's, that, that it's failed. But the fluoropolymers, you're not leaving anything behind. You're changing the surface tension and the energy of the stone. How much so, is a, a gallon of that product, Rob? Um, a gallon of that product retails for about one thirty-nine. That's it. Yeah, um, you know, and I'm it so, but it's you know, where you're looking now. There's a product we have that Stone Pro has. It's called Pro Sealer, that retails more in the neighborhood of the five eleven. Still a floral polymer. Still has great. Now, the guys that are still listening, do a little research. Just go on. Just Google silicone sealers, which is like a 511, versus floral polymer sealers or floral chemical sealers. And what you'll read is silicone sealers have no oil protection. So there's millions of guys out there sealing, or thousands of guys out there sealing granite countertops of 511 with no oil protection. That's why removing stains is such a big part of our business. Floral polymers protect against water and oil. So you're giving your customer better protection, um, but the Pro Sealer is more in the same price range as the 511, and the difference is it's got two and a half times less the fluoropolymer in it. So it protects against water and oil, but that's more of a sealer where you're going to have to go back in more often to seal. What was the name of the the, uh, the longer lasting stuff? Ultimate Pro. Ultimate Pro, and that's a product where you, you're going to pour it on, work it in with your sponge. Give it five minutes, do a second coat, and then buff it off with a uh, cotton and microfiber towel. No, no, it, and it's it, 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 no. There's no buffing with this product. It flashes you off. On, the you, keep it, you keep it wet three to five minutes, and you wipe it dry. There's no. There's the solvent that the solvent that they use is a hybrid organic solvent. It's faster than than the old petroleum solvents. There's no residue. The other thing and you guys can test this and I've got a I've got a video thing to show you if you the sealers that you're using they tell you not that that uh, not to walk on if you're doing a floor just because that's how long it takes a silicone to cure enough to where you're not going to break the bond and then it will tell you on that same bottle don't spill on that stone for 24 to 72 hours, but that's how long it takes to cure. You can put this stuff on, keep it wet for three to five minutes, wipe it dry, and you can do with whatever the stone you want to do with it. So if you're doing if you're doing a thousand square feet of travertine, 
you can now move the furniture to one side because there's no you're not waiting for something to bond to protect the stone. No, it's like when you wax your car. When you're changing the surface tension of your car, the difference is there's no crosslink going on with your with with your car like there is with the granite. But when you wax your car and you buff that wax off, there's no four hour period before you can wet your car down. You change the surface yes. tension. So with this product, and I've got a video that shows you we put it on, I don't even keep it wet for two or three minutes. Wipe it dry and put water on it and it repels the minute you wipe it off. So there's no there's no there's no in between time. So now you can do a floor, move the furniture, sill one half of the room, put the furniture back and sill the other half of the room and not worry about having to come back the next day. It's and you apply it after you've steam cleaned the floor and you've got the standing moisture off. Is it okay to apply it right then, or do you want to wait till the next day? Um, you want to wait uh, because it's not a petroleum solvent. You can you can put this on when it's really unique. What they've done is it's a it's a solvent water mix. So what happens? They use a solvent so it gets into the stone deep and quickly. They, they, the, the water sits at the surface to keep the solvent from flashing too quickly to give it time to cure. Okay. So within three to five minutes, the stone is taken as much in as it can, and you wipe it dry. Because it's not a petroleum solvent, to answer your question, Mike, if there's some moisture in the stone, it's not going to be a problem. You want the stone to be dry enough to where the stone can take the product in. If it's saturated where everything's going to sit on top, you're not going to seal it. So if there's some moisture in the stone, you're okay. You just need to make sure there's not so much that the, that it, that the sealer can't penetrate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And what isn't it good? What surface is it not okay on? I mean, is it, you want to use this on grout on a nice floor or is it uh, more for dense stones? No, no I, it's, this is more for dense stone. So I would use it on, on all the count, like marble and granite countertops. If I'm doing a marble floor, I'm going to use the Pro Sealer. That's the stuff that's more like $80 a gallon. Um, so, but all the, every sealer in the Stone Pro makes it are all floral polymers, um, except for the Safeguard. That's a silicone like the 511. So our, the, the Stone Pro Sealer that's equal to 511, they sell for $30 a gallon. And it's a great water barrier. There's just no oil protection. Um, so the, I, I, I tell guys use the Ultimate Pro for food prep services and granite, and then for everything else you're doing, just use the Pro Sealer. You don't you don't need a high solid, um, you know, sealer to to, to to seal the grout. You can use a uh, you can use the sealers that are in the fifty to seventy dollar range. The marble countertop in the prep area. Use the good stuff. I would use the Polish Pro because it's going to get deeper into the marble than, than I'm mean, sorry. I would use the Ultimate Pro because it's going to get deeper into the marble than, than say the other the Polish Pro, uh, the Pro Sealer wheel. So you're going to have to wear more marble be away before you're going to have to worry about it. All right. Okay. Okay. So we'll get through this here. All right, so that's the counter. Let's see if we can finish this baby up here. Whoops, there we are. Is that the classroom? Can, can you see that? Can you see the video or the PowerPoint again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll just finish yes, up. So. All I want to finish up with is um, so for the, for those of you that are out there that might be interested, this is uh, and I've got information I can email you. These are the next dates coming up. I I know uh, uh, my son's going to be out here on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. You got the the first few dates for the boot camp, kind of, and this gives you what we do. We do granite countertops, cleaning polish, and scratch removal, crack repair. Um, anything that you'll run across, we do, but we spend a lot of our time on questions that you have. It's all hands-on. It's eight to ten hours a day. It's all hands-on. Never sitting in a classroom, never sitting in a chair, never standing around watching me show you how to do something. Um, and it's what you want to work on. So it's, um, 
in the in the picture that even saw my desktop. You'll see guys do guy doing concrete in the corner, another guy doing traversing repair on a floor, other guys taking scratches out of granite. So you you work on and you work at your pace. So no matter what level you're at, you learn what you want to learn on. You don't you don't have to listen to something you already know, or you don't have to sit and listen to something that's over your head. And that's uh, I think that's really what makes um, what we do a little bit different because it's really geared to the level that everybody comes to. And it doesn't matter what you come to want to learn, you, you'll learn it in the boot camp. Um, here's my information. Write it down if, if you've got it. Uh, that's my cell number and that's my email address. And I'm available all the time. Rob, you got a fan here in the chat room. Johnny Bravo says he goes to nearly every one of your boot camps. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well that the reason, the reason he does that, and it's once you come for the local guys, it's harder, but I have guys that have come to several classes, one guy in, in uh, Orlando and a couple guys in Texas and a guy in, in Wisconsin. When you come to one class, you're welcome to come back to as many more as you want to at no cost. So you pay the seven fifty one one time, and then over however, for over the next 10 years or however long I'm alive to do this, you can come back and continue your education. So the 750 really is. No, it's a bargain. The 750 is really what you pay for a, a life. And, and things in this industry change so much that you can come to the one in November and come back next November, and we're using new chemicals and new tools and trying new things. So you're 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 uh, you're not limited in in, in your education. So the 750 we do allows me to have uh, a 4,000 square foot training center, allows me to put new floors in for the classes, at least a couple new floors in, to supply the chemicals, to supply the equipment, and to give guys an, an experience every time they come. And that, that's why Johnny comes back to all the and, and And what's really cool, what I've learned, is when you come back, the guys that are there for the first time, are asking you questions. So now your education takes a next level up because now you're teaching and now you're talking about experiences and you start realizing that you really know a little bit more than you need to. So they come to they come to learn more, but they, they also teach at the same time, which is a pretty cool concept. No, that's awesome. So uh, Rob and I were talking about this earlier today and for those of you who are regulars, um, my forum, Mikey's board. We have a uh, we have a raffle system where we often give away pretty cool prizes. And Rob wants to donate a tuition to the February boot camp. So we'll have that up in a day or so. And you just have to be a, a logged in member, earning credits. As you participate on the forum, you earn credits. Uh, basically, the more you post. Uh, the more credits you earn. Uh, you start a thread, you're going to earn a certain amount of credits. You get, you have a birthday, you earn a certain amount. Just signing up, you get a certain amount. I think it's 50 just for signing. So we'll run the uh, the raffle for, I don't know, it's, what do you think, Rob, three weeks or so? Yeah, that would be great. It'll be up, it'll be very obvious. We'll have all the information there, hotel information, all that stuff. So it won't be a cheap raffle. We're gonna You're going to need to have a few few tickets, maybe uh, a couple hundred. So get busy posting, get busy uh, asking questions about stone. Rob's on there, ask something and won't get, won't hang for long. And in three weeks, you know, you can enter more than once. So the more you post, the more tickets you'll get. And Rob also, he posted right here, let's not stay on this panel for too long. Rob's going to pull this, his hair this out. Is my, this is my last panel, Mike. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so he's got all powders, forty-nine dollars for uh, three-pound buckets. All of them, not all of them together. I'm sure it's thirty, forty-nine dollars each. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever one they want, and and all of those buckets do about a thousand square feet. Goes a long ways. Uh, one buy one stone scrub, so half off on stone scrub. You certainly don't want to buy just one. Uh, Revolution diamond impregnated pads, 20% off, and then the countertop kit, which is, I'm going to let you describe everything that's in there, Rob. There's more than I can recall. Yeah. Um, if you want it with Makita, it's $4.99, and it's about a $700 value, but it's the, the Makita 
Um, you get the stone scrub, you get the polish pro, the powder, uh, the patea powder, the ultimate pro, and two of the finishing touches. You get uh, a concentrated quart of the crystal clean, a ready to use crystal clean, uh, either diamond renew or uh, the uh, easy marble polish, depending on which one you want. You get a full set of seven inch diamond impregnated pads. You get a full set of three inch diamond impregnated pads for your tight spots in your corner. Um, you get a three inch backer to put on your Makita to get into the corners. All your microfiber towels, all your polishing pads, uh, the easy mask products so you can mask off, uh, sealer applicator. Uh, is there anything else that's in there? Lamb's wool bonnet. So basically, in, you have everything to do, any marble travertine or granite countertop you run across. If you have a machine or you want to do the, the uh, Harbor Freight thing, uh, you can get the uh, the same thing for 250 if you don't need the Makita. Yeah, what a screaming deal. Think, uh, how much money can you make with that kit right there, Rob? Can you even do the math on that? I mean, it's um, I will tell you that no, I will tell you for the $250, we had a we had a guy that that uh, shared it at one of the trade shows a year ago that he spent the $249 for the kit. He had the Makita. He had done $2,300 worth of work and still had three quarters of his kit left. Hmm. Man. I think I'm going to come down in February. My kids keep getting to go. But, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's it's uh, there, there's a lot of guys out there that can do a really cool thing. What what we really try to do, you know, it's not it's not rocket rocket scientists when you come to the boot camp or if you're local. Um, we do a lot of free one-day workshops as well um, to kind of get your feet wet. But uh, it's it's I really try to tackle, and again because I'm I'm in tune with all these guys, with hundreds of guys around the country and every state in, in in the U.S. So I'm hearing daily what they're running across. I hear daily the problems they're having. I hear daily of the issues that their customers are having. So. We really tie it, try to tie the boot camp around because there's a lot of guys out there that can do a lot of things I can't do when it comes to stone. But we're about solving problems. We're about making money. We're about, for you guys, we're about your customer calls with the problem. How do I solve it? They've got a black granite countertop that's turning gray because the, the, the dye and the color is coming out of it. How do we stop that? How do we take care of it? We've, we've got you covered. We are now, we have been testing, and, and now in the, this will be the first camp where we really concentrate on engineered stone, quartz, silostone, Caesar stone. They got scratches, or they're losing color, or they're having problems. How do we polish it back up? We found a great system now, a three-step system, where you can put, not only put the texture back in it, you can start polishing that back up. That's a huge problem, because so many people are buying this quartz and this engineered stone. So it's a, it's it's when you walk into a customer's house, the problem they're having is what we really deal with. It's not being fancy and it's not doing, you know, super stuff where I got to get paid nine dollars a square foot to make this work. It's 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 really about what's going on on a daily basis in your guys' lives. If, if stone is really something you want to get into. Hey Rob. Uh, yeah. Show my kid your trick there for the black absolute that's that's going gray. We got a real large apartment. Well, it's more of a condo apartment place right downtown Santa Cruz. I mean, these are like uh, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar, you know, six hundred foot apartments. Yep. And every one of them's got that black absolute, and every one of them's got you know at what well, looks like an etch mark, but it was basically wherever a solvent was spread, or they came in there and tried to reseal it, and the solvent spread yep. that. At India Inc. and they're just we get calls on it frequently and you immediately know what building they're talking about. But man, if we could go to that the property manager there and say we got the no, answer or at least we have fix. we have a huge we have a huge property uh, a builder out here. Uh, well, they're actually up in your neck of the woods too, Irvine Company, and mm -hmm. uh, they've got hundred they got thousands of high end apartments. And that's when we first ran into the problem. They brought all this 
prefab black granite in from China, containers of it. And people would go to wash their hands and it turned gray. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a product, it, it's called Uniblack from a company called, uh, named Tinex um, that I'm working with. And it's something that's very simple, very easy to do. And the great thing for you guys is it's not permanent. So it's something you're going to have to continue to go back. And basically it's, it's a high-end color enhancer. Not a sealer, but a color enhancer that's got the same black dye in it that they dye. Because pretty much every piece, and you can, again, research this on the Internet, just about every, every black piece of black granite that's ever been quarried from the earth isn't black. It might be dark gray, mm -hmm. but it's not black. So all that black, so the lesser expensive or the cheaper black granites bleach out. The more expensive ones don't, but they've all been treated or dyed to some point. And what's what's the dye? It come, you can always test one of those with uh, acetone and a towel on underneath the bull nose, and it generally exactly. comes right off. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, some some people use ink. Some people use petroleum. And then some other people just use black dye. It depends on the company. Hmm. That's why I went with quartz on my countertop. Uh, Johnny Bravo saying he wants to learn quartz. What what does quartz ever need other than maybe fixing up knife scratches? Somebody's using it as a chopping block. Is uh, our last house we had concrete counters, which is like living with a sponge, and now we got quartz, which seems impervious <laughs> to everything. We've gone from one extreme to the other, so we take great joy in letting our red wine puddles sit on that with that white quartz all night long, and then coming in the morning and just wiping it off with a damp towel. Yeah. Um, you know, quartz has its problems just like granite does too. It, it's not as it's not as porous, so it's not stained. But but there's a lot of issues with with that with it scratchy. Um, you know, it's yeah, yeah. yeah not there's it, more than there is with granite because they sell this stuff as, as indestructible. But basically, you have the silica and 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 the, and the quartz and feldspar and all these minerals that make up granite, and they're vacuumed into a resin. Mm. The resin really is, is not a part of the granite. Of countertops, huh? Oh, kind of, yeah. So, but I hear about this all the time, and I, I'm, t I mean, it got to the point now where we carry um, three different types of engineered stone or quartz polishing pads, from wet to dry to dry to um, fine in a three sip system. And you know, and I work with a lot. There's a lot of fabricators come to the store, and they really screw this stuff up. But, but we're selling, I brought in, a week ago, a week and a half ago, we brought in 12 of these three-step kits, mm. and they were, they were off the shelf in less than two days. Hmm. And I think we sell them for 170 bucks for the kit. Uh, somebody asked how they're going to get these special prices. Rob, do you want to post these on the forum in the uh, hard surface room and make sure you put the date on there so it looks like we got another uh, week or so? Yeah. And is there a code number? They just want to say they want the Mikey's board special. Um, they want the Mikey's board special if they talk to the guys. But again, if you're still out there and you're watching, put this number in your phone. Nobody out there that, 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 that I have talked to, if you have a question, if you have a customer that's got a question with Stone, if you don't put this number in your phone, if you put this number in your phone and you give me a call, if I don't answer, leave me a message or send me a text, I will call you back. You'll never have to leave a customer again with, or, or even be able to get back to your customer without an answer from a question or a problem that they're having. So... You use this resource, and, and you got my cell number. I mean, you got my email address as well. Um, but you can call me if you're out there. Um, you can also call the uh, the store and the counter. The guys at the counter know what they're talking about. Um, if you're out there, you can write it down. The store number is 714-772-2490. I <laughs> need to get a jump on Mike. And I'll and I'll post this and I can make this I can make and I could do you see my cell number and stuff up there? Did it switch Mike? Yeah, it's up there. Okay. Um and we can take this, Mike, if you want to take this and uh 
Um, I'll put this on Dropbox in the morning if you if you want this, and I know it will be on uh, YouTube. But uh, I can post this tomorrow, and we'll make it good for for all your 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 uh, Mikey's board guys for for a couple of weeks. Fred's gonna have a heart attack when he goes to uh, edit this YouTube. <laughs> Cut out all this. <laughs> you better send him a complimentary countertop kit. <laughs> well, that, that, well, you tell me what you want, and I'll take care of you, buddy. <laughs> um, oh man, you got no the, idea how much work it takes. Uh, and if there's anybody out there that wants, to, and if there's anybody that's listening that wants a sample of anything, do you want a small, you know, half a pound sample of a powder or an ounce sample of the scrub, something to try before you spend money? That's all good with me too. Just let me know what you want. Let me know how I can help. Well, very good. What time? Holy, it's eight thirty. <laughs> So how, I need all all 18 of you to all chime in on happy birthday to my, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Tomorrow's the big day, 5-0. And uh, for, for me, yeah. For who? For me, tomorrow's my 50th wow. birthday. Good, that's awesome. Happy birthday, Mike. I just turned 52 last month. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and let me tell you, the difference between my, my eyesight and my hearing from 50-52 is not even close, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm already on the downhill spiral. Get on that slide and come that. with me. Get on that slide and come with me. <laughs> I'm ahead of all of you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, looks like John Johnny Cash, John Helmer, and I might be coming down there in February. Uh, unfortunately, I doubt we'll be able to ride down, so we'll get on a puddle jumper and come down or something. Anyhow, Rob, we've kept you on here way too long. I don't know what was with the, all the uh, issues. It was just the perfect storm tonight, but we got through it. There was tons of great info. I really appreciate it. We'll figure out the sound thing. Um, not Again, not sure, but Fred will figure it out. And we will have you again on soon. Maybe we'll take it to the next level. Uh, I'm thrilled to have my son going down there in two weeks, although i got to come back down here to babysit his damn bulldog for the whole week. I'm not too thrilled about that because it smells to high heaven. But, uh, <laughs> Enzyme. <laughs> yeah. Holy <laughs> side. <laughs> Maybe I'll scrub, scrub him down with some stone scrub and let the delimaline do its job. Works Get on everything. Off him. Yeah, yeah, it works right. on everything. So, uh, Rob. Thanks again. Great class. Thanks for everybody for hanging in there. We had a, a pretty tenacious crew to put up with all that. Uh, next Wednesday, we have the guys from House Call Pro, the latest, greatest in online uh, database management. It's mostly a phone app and has all kinds of nifty features. Here, a lot of good stuff about it. So be here for that, 6 o'clock next Wednesday. And Mark, you got any uh, any? Roundup comments there. You, you need to move oh, into I'm, more uh, of this stuff. You better go February, to kit. February, uh, I might be heading that direction February. Me, the missus, uh -huh. and the puppies. So I know. It just might be well, something to consider. Yeah. What Rob hey. told me is they start early. They go from 7 to 3.30. Yep. And then uh, the rest of the day, you get to take the family to Disneyland. I don't know about Disneyland in February, but Southern California. <laughs> Unless, yeah, no, uh, I actually have I I actually have guys that, that are that, that show up by six and don't leave till four or five. So, but the fish hours are seven to three. Um, and let me just say, if anybody's out my way um, and there's not a boot camp going on, call me, and I will make sure to put a half a day or three quarters a day or a full day if I can do it. Um, set you up in uh, in the training center and and work with you. So if you can't make it, but you can come and spend a couple hours. And you want to learn a little bit? Just let me know. Cool. Uh, if, if El Nino hits Disneyland, might be Marine Land this year. <laughs> uh, anyhow, thanks, this, guys. Uh, Had a great yeah, time. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next week. See you on the forum. Uh, make sure to get on the forum and enter to win the uh, seven hundred fifty dollar tuition to uh, to Disneyland, basically. The Disneyland for stone nerds. And then uh, take advantage of those, those sale prices for sure. Stock up on all the goodies. And I guess that's it. I'm starving. I'm going to go see if there's an inning left in the baseball game. Mark, thank you. Go to bed. You look tired. Yeah, I'm a little wiped. <laughs> but hey, Rob, awesome. or 
Yeah, Johnny, I'm in Santa Cruz, but I'm heading home around 10 or 11, so I'll call you when I'm on the road. Okay, thanks, everybody. Good night, Take guys. care. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Thank you. See you all later.